Hi, so in the two previous videos, we've looked at the shocks that shift the aggregate demand curve. That is an increase in the money supply and the reduction in budget deficit. There are other shocks, however, that affect both the aggregate demand and the aggregate supply and play an important role in, in fluctuations. So an obvious one and one that we'll be observing in this section is the change in prices of oil. Okay, this figure plots two services. The first represented by the blue line is the dollar price of oil. That is the price of a barrel of oil in dollars since 1970. It is measured on the vertical axis on the left. This is the series that is quoted in the newspapers, more or less every day. What matters, however, is the economy in the, for the economic decision is not the dollar price, but the real price of oil. That is the dollar price of oil divided by the price level. Therefore, the second series in the figure represented by the red line shows the real price of oil constructed as the dollar price of oil divided by the u.s consumer price index note that the real price of oil is an index it is normalized to to be equals to 100 in 1970 it is measured on the vertical axis on the right side So between the 1970s and the 2000s, we've seen two large increases in real price of oil. One from 1973 to 1975, and the other from around 1995 to 2008. The question then is what was behind these large increases? So in the 1970s, the the large increase in price in oil prices was caused by the formation of the organization of petroleum exporting uh, countries which is known as OPEC so OPEC became a cartel of oil producers that was able to act as a monopoly and increase prices and uh, as well as the disruptions that were due to wars and uprisings that were happening in the Middle East in those times. So in, 2000, in the 2000, the growth, or rather the increase in the prices of oil was due to the growth of the emerging economies, in particular China, which led to a rapid increase in the world demand for, for oil, and by implication, a steady increase in and real prices of, of, of oil. So whether coming from the changes in the supply side in the 1970s or changes in the demand side in the 2000s, the implications for firms and consumers are the same. These are more expensive oil and energy. So, so far, we've assumed that output is produced using only labor. So price of oil does not appear in our model. That is, it is not there in the aggregate demand, aggregate supply and aggregate demand relations. So to extend our model, we should recognize that output is produced using labor and other inputs, including energy. So this will help us figure out the effects of an increase in price of oil in our economy. So the easier way to capture increase in oil prices is by increasing the markup of the price over the nominal wages. That is, given wages, an increase in price of oil increases the cost of production, forcing firms to increase their prices. So let's see the short and medium run effect of oil prices or other change in oil prices so firstly 
Let's look at what happens in the natural rate of unemployment when all prices increases. So initial equilibrium is given by, by A. And an increase in markup leads to a downward shift in the price setting line from PS to P with to a price setting line with with them higher markup. So remember the higher the markup, the lower the way the real wages implied by the price setting. So the equilibrium moves from A there to a new A with an apostrophe. So real wages are now lower and uh, so real wages are lower there and the natural level of unemployment is higher. So that means that getting work workers to accept lower real wages requires an increase in unemployment. So the increase in natural unemployment implies an, a decrease in natural employment. And as you may remember, we said uh, employment, or in this case, natural employment is equal to natural level of output. So what we've just established is that increase in price of oil decreases the natural level of output through unemployment or natural level of unemployment. We can now look at the short run and the medium run effect of the increase or change in price of oil. So increase in price of oil shows up as an increase in, in the markup. Therefore, the increase in markup leads to firms to increase their prices and by implication increasing the price level at any level of output. So increase in the price level at any level of output shifts the aggregate supply upwards. So therefore the aggregate supply will shift from that lower aggregate supply curve to a higher aggregate supply curve there. So because of the increase in prices that therefore will uh, shift the aggregate supply curve. The question now is does the aggregate demand shift as a result of the increase in price in oil? So the correct answer would be maybe. So there are many channels through which the demand might be affected at a given price level. So for instance, one, higher oil prices will change investment plans such as shifting to less energy intensive equipment. An alternate, another way will be since income is distributed more to producers of oil from the buyers of oil. Oil producers may spend less than what oil buyers would have spent and thereby decreasing the consumption function. So for ease or for simplicity, and since some of the effects shift the aggregate demand to the right and others shift it to the left, let's simply assume that we we let the effect on the aggregate demand curve cancel each other out and therefore the aggregate demand curve will not shift. So under this assumption, in the short run, only the aggregate supply curve so will, will shift. So the economy moves along the aggregate demand curve as you can see from there to there. And uh, output decreases from natural level of output there to an output at lower than the natural level of output. So the increase in oil prices leads to firms to increase their prices. This increases price levels and then decreases the demand and output. Now what happens over time, although house put, uh, output has fallen, the natural level has fallen even more as you can see in this, in this regard. So as we, as we said earlier that the aggregate supply curve should go through a point where 
where expected price is equals to actual prices and and level of output is equals to its natural level so after the the increase in price of oil this is represented by p by b and the new aggregate supply curve go through through that point however at point a which is the if the short run effect of the increase in price of oil output is still greater than its natural level this means that the as curve will continue to shift so the economy will move from a still a long aggregate demand uh, curve to a new equilibrium at a higher point so at this new equilibrium at point a within within uh, inverted commas output is equals to its natural level or let's call this a new level new level of new le level of natural output and the price level is higher than before the oil the oil shocks so the shift in aggregate supply affects output not only in the short but also in the medium run this means that increase in the price of oil decreases output and increases prices in the short run as we can see the output in the short run was was decreased from y n to y in the middle there so if the increase in the price of oil is permanent output is lower not only in the short run but also in the medium run meaning that will have a new a lower natural level of output so this simply implies that the cost of production is now higher than before and labor is not the only factor of production that is being bought hence we now have a new lower natural level of output and a higher price level so let's let's conclude on this so this graph shows us a summary of what we've just covered so what happens in monetary expansion and uh, and deficit reduction both in the short run and in the medium run so we've seen that in the short run monetary expansion output level increases and interest rate decreases and price increase however in the medium run there is no change in output level it means that it returns back to natural level interest rate also doesn't change but prices increase in the deficit reduction we see a decrease in output in the in the short run and a decrease in interest rate in the short run as well as a decrease in price in the short run however in the medium run there is no change in uh, output level interest rate decreases and um, and price level also decreases all right so we've come to an end of um, of our chapter 7 thank you